Hey, it's Mike with Become the Knight, and welcome to this episode of Mike, ah, the music snob. So for those of you that haven't heard, Lana Del Rey is being sued by none other than Radiohead. Why, you may be asking? Why? Copyright, of course! Copyright, that always gigantic thorn in everyone's side. For those of you who are not familiar with my views and thoughts on copyright, there will be a link in the description to that video and an annotation up top. Brief rundown, I think it's bullshit. At very least, it needs to be reformed. So how did Lana Del Rey infringe the copyright of Radiohead? Simple, she pretty much ripped off their song Creep, their biggest hit most likely, with her song Get Free. Now yes, I would agree. I do not believe that she ripped it off intentionally. I think that the song is that popular and is heard by that many people, even in the background, it probably just subconsciously came through her music. Though, not gonna lie, I'm kinda shocked that nobody she was working with mentioned this to her. That chord progression is very distinct in its simplicity, and if you look at the melody comparing Lana's to Creep, it's almost exactly the same, honestly, even part for part. Here's a little side-by-side -side comparison. Now, it may not be easy to pick it out by listening to these two things that have slight differences, different sounds, and also are in different keys. If you try to sing the melody of Creep over top of Lana's, it matches really damn close. It is pretty clear that these are extremely similar compositionally. Looking at the chord progression and where each of the melodies have their harmonic focus and pacing, it's pretty stark. Okay, now while I think copyright and how it's being implemented is stupid, let's take that out of the picture for just a second. Does Radiohead have a case here according to law? Yes. Law does not require intent for it to be broken. Okay, so Radiohead has some legal recourse. What compensation should they be asking for? If you're really that butthurt about it, ask for writing credits. I can absolutely understand that. If someone had only listened to Lana Del Rey's song, and since it is such a close compositional match, they may attribute that composition to her being the first one who have ever created it. And we can pretty objectively say that's not the case. Radiohead should get some credit for that. Getting a piece of the royalties, though, that's where I would personally draw the line. Now, legally speaking, yes, they would be entitled to some of the royalties, but in my own personal thoughts and feelings, I don't think they should. Now, I am certainly no expert in copyright and different sections of copyright law have different rules that are applied, but there is a such thing as the spirit of the law, or that is why the law was created. The spirit of copyright is to ensure that the proper person gets credit for having done the work and that they are properly compensated for it. As with anything else, it is an imperfect system. One aspect of determining whether or not something violates copyright, at least in the fair use doctrine, is whether or not that work that is being prosecuted infringes upon the market of the original work. Again, I understand fair use and compositional copyright law do not share the same rules necessarily, but we are looking at the spirit in this case. Does Lana's song impact the market of Radiohead's song? Hell no. Here are your three scenarios. Person listens to both songs, likes both, and continues listening to both of them. Person listens to both songs, thinks that Radiohead's is better, and thinks that Lana does not have any genuine artistry. Therefore, they would stop listening to Lana Del Rey. Number three, the person only listens to Lana Del Rey's, and they have no idea that Creep exists, but by Lana Del Rey's song being out there, 
doesn't impact their ability to discover or not discover or like or dislike that song Creep. No one is liking Creep any less or unable to find it because Lana Del Rey happened to use the same compositional structure. Again, I might see why Radiohead might want writing credit because they want to ensure that they get their due in the public eye. A large portion of why people invest into music and invest into musicians is because they believe it's genuine, a genuine form of expression. And stealing that from someone else and claiming that is yours is kind of shitty. Credit should go where credit is due. The dollars will follow that. Radiohead did do it before Lana, and it is fair to make that clear to the listener. But going back to how this impacts the market of Creep, by every other functional measure other than the theory of the song, it's a completely different song. The two core elements are almost identical, that's the chords and the melody, but Lana's chorus is completely different. The sound, feel, arrangement, production, topic, all completely different. While they share the same music theory compositional structure, I would say they're still two very different songs. The mood created by Lana is some flower power bullshit, and the mood created by Creep is a whiny, emo, high school pussy bitch that's not remotely the same demographic. You may be able to claim rights to monetary compensation, but in the spirit of the law, I think you're focusing on the wrong things here. Of course, this is the same guy bitching about how Spotify doesn't properly compensate its artists. Arguably the most liberating music platform today for both artists and listeners alike. Oh, you don't think you're getting paid enough? Cry me a fucking river, Thom. Oh, I'm sorry, I did not use your proper title. Mr. Yorkie. Okay, 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 I'm sorry. I'm not showing nearly enough respect for our paragon of artistic integrity. Tom York never wrote a song that was claimed to be copyright infringement. Tom York is a giant fucking hypocrite. When Creep was released in 93, they were sued by the Hollies for copyright infringement. Creep, the same song that they are suing Lana Del Rey about. The Hollies won. They received writing credits and also receive a marginal percentage of the royalties from Creep. But when negotiating and trying to settle outside of court, how much did the lawyers for Radiohead ask for from Lana Del Rey? 100% of the royalties. Are you kidding me? How greedy of a bastard do you have to be? And to compile how much of a bastard he is being, Creep is not the only song that Get Free rips off. People are so focused in on this controversy of Radiohead suing Lana Del Rey that they completely missed that the chorus of Get Free rips off Last Christmas by Wham. So where's Wham's lawsuit? For that matter, the actual people who quote unquote wrote it first, which is still bullshit, where's the Hollies lawsuit? Non-existent. You know why? My best guess is because they have better shit to do. Music as an art form is highly derivative. And yes, I agree, I have already said in this video, I believe someone who writes it first should get some type of credit. But because art in general is highly derivative, lots of things are going to be similar. Some a little too close for comfort, and then we can talk, as in Lana Del Rey. And yeah, you should definitely have some writing credits on there. And it really hurts me to think that some of that money is going over to Radiohead, especially in this example. In my eyes, unless it's damn clear that someone was trying to emulate your song and your song's success, you should not be going after them for royalties. Like Sweet Home Alabama by Leonard Skinner and whatever the fuck Kid Rock did with Sweet Home Alabama and ruined it. Now Kid Rock obviously wasn't trying to steal the song, he was trying to bring it to another generation, although it was already the most overplayed fucking song ever. And he paid royalties for it, and that's fine. That I am like on board with, 100% on board with. But unless it's an example like that, just let art go. Let art grow, unless you're a miserable prick named Tom York. 
So those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, if you want to help me make better videos, you can go to link in my description, pledge to my Patreon every month. Or if you don't want to do a rolling pledge, I also accept Bitcoin and PayPal as a tip jar. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Become the Night. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video. Rock on!